All right, guys, well, I'm back today with one of my favorite AR-10s I've ever had out to the range. This is the Palmetto State Armory Sabre AR-10 with a 20-inch barrel chambered in 308. They offer this version in 6.5 Creedmoor and 308, and I specifically requested the 308 version be sent out to the channel because I have a lot of ammo and I plan on shooting this gun a lot. This is the first shots and overview video of what many are calling the M110 clone from Palmetto State Armory. It really mimics the M110 rifle system with a few differences here and there, but in general, you get the look and feel for much less money. Now, just like everything else, Palmetto State Armory, the Saber lineup can be had in complete rifles in a wide variety of configurations. And if you're not a fan of this N110 copy, you can actually pick up the Saber with a few different color variations, rail systems, barrel lengths, and lower assemblies. You can also pick up upper assemblies and lower assemblies independently to save a little bit of money and put them together. But the only real way to get this configuration is to buy the set. Now, the cool thing about this set is it comes with the rifle itself, three of these metal mags, a bipod up at the front, as well as a really nice Savior equipment case, which I'm going to try to bring into frame and show you guys. So this is a really nice case that they offer with this setup, and the case itself is of an incredible quality that I just absolutely love. So those rifle cases are pretty slick, and I love picking up that entire setup all you really need to do is add an optic to the top and you will be good to go and that's what i did put one of the vortex razor hds that i did a video on a while back for a deal alert if you guys want more information about this optic you could check through my channel and subscribe to the channel for more reviews on optics as well as high value rifles like this psa saber we're going to start at the front and work our way to the back and talk about the specs and features of this rifle as well as performance down at the range with a few different ammo types as well as a few different mag types. When you're looking at this rifle, one thing that really stands out is the overall fit and finish and quality of the build. PSA is really killing it when it comes to build quality lately, especially with a lot of their clones. These guys have been doing it for years now and are making so many rifles they've perfected their class. So this is a pretty slick setup and this one comes with the three prong, prong flash hider that you see on the front. That attaches to the 5 8 by 24 thread pitch on the barrel itself. And this barrel is actually Cerakoted to match the rifle, which is pretty slick. Again, kind of harkening back to the M110. The barrel is 20 inches long. It's made out of 4150 chromoly vanadium steel, which is an incredible barrel steel and does really well down at the range. We'll talk about the accuracy part of this um, in the accuracy part of this review during the reliability section of this review. Attached to the barrel itself is actually an adjustable gas block and from the factory setting I haven't adjusted it and I have only run it with brass cased ammunition. So I've ran it with ball, a 7.62 by 51 kind of hunting rounds, 308 rounds, as well as some match grade 7.62 by 51 and it ejected and cycled perfectly with all of those ammos at the current gas setting but it's a really nice touch that you have this adjustable gas block up front and with just a click of your finger you can adjust it on the fly no need for tools which is pretty slick the barrel itself is surrounded by the quad rail and the quad rail is where this rifle really shines and gets its look from that m110 the quad rail is coming back and psa is really leading the push especially on a lot of these clone builds and this one is just incredibly functional it works out great at the range definitely going to add some weight to it but worth every ounce in my opinion because this rifle looks and feels awesome it does come with these quad rail covers qd slots at the rear and pick rail everywhere you need it to attach a ton of different things including the included magpul bipod a lot of guys were saying they wish the magpul bipod would have been left out um, and that way they could have added what they want I'm on kind of the other take. I love it. I feel like it matches perfectly. It functions great down at the range. It's super easy to use and adjust and was very practical and functional. And it's just super easy when you get this entire setup, including the three extra mags, the bipod, 
and the bag itself. And again, a lot of times, if you don't want a lot of this stuff, eventually PSA is going to be offering uppers, lowers, and different kits. I'm not sure about this particular M110, but this setup is just a nice function. Moving back to the receivers themselves, the fit and finish is very nice on these. They made up solid. This one does have the um, forward assist, the dust cover, and the shell deflector all are pretty much standard AR-10, and they work out great down at the range. You start to get into some extras with the ambidextrous charging handle that works out incredibly nice, just a nice touch to a practical rifle. Now, are those going to be clone correct? Not necessarily, but this is a, a clone-ish style build. They have more clone correct rifles on their page that you can sift through whether it's the AR-15 Sabre or the AR AR-10 Sabre lineup. They've got more clone correct but this is a functional clone that anybody can grab and utilize down at the range and it still has a ton of practical applications which we'll talk about in a minute. Now, looking at the BCG itself, you can tell it's going to be a different color. That's actually a hard chrome finish on that BCG, and it pairs up perfectly with that charging handle. So that Radian Raptor LT and the BCG all just flow seamless, seamlessly to make it an incredibly functional rifle down at the range. Moving on to the lower assembly, you do have the PSA grip right here. It's fairly ergonomic, nice texturing, an extended trigger guard for gloved fingers, an ambidextrous safety selector, and this one is cut down on the other side, which I love. If it wasn't cut down, I would remove it because it would dig into your finger, but it works out great. They really thought this out. It also comes with anti-rotation pins and PSA's two-stage trigger. This trigger is nice. It has an absolutely smooth take up and then a crisp break, a clear match trigger and a clear winner for this particular setup. There's nothing I'm going to be changing about this rifle. I literally pulled it out of the box as is, dropped the scope on and it works perfectly. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the reliability once we finish this up with this lower. So we'll talk about how the trigger um, it worked and functioned with a wide variety of ammunition down at the range. So Moving along to the stock itself, it's a hard polymer stock. It's got some nice texturing on the back and a little storage compartment with the sling swivel right there. So everything is good to go. Again, not 100% clone correct, but pretty darn close and it's super functional down at the range. So now let's talk about reliability and accuracy down at the range. And I know there was a couple of questions online about the mags used for the rifles. And I have some interesting results with that. So I started utilizing the three mags that came with the setup and one out of the three metal mags did not function with the rifle. I marked it and tried it three times. It either wouldn't feed from the mag or it would nose up or nose down. So it was a mag issue and it was definitely related to that specific mag. Once I took it out of the rotation, there was 100% function down at the range with the two other metal mags that were utilized. Now I took it on two range trips because I specifically wanted to test out reliability and function on a few different occasions with three or four types of ammo and two different magazines. Well, two different style magazines. We already determined that one out of the three metal mags were bad, and I think that's what a lot of other users may be seeing with their rifles. I think it's an occasional mag issue that's causing the feed issues. So what I did was try the Magpul P mags with 100% function across three different Magpul P mags. So it worked out great. With ball and hollow point and soft tip ammunition, I had no feed or function issues, so this was 100% reliable minus the one metal mag. And I'm going to reach out to PSA, and I'm sure they're going to help me out with customer service. I just haven't done that yet. I just wanted to get rounds through this rifle and continue to make the video. So no issues with the rifle itself when it comes to function. This actually worked great on that original gas setting was 100% functional with every ammo I tried. So no issues there. So reliability, this thing is top notch. I was just a little bit frustrated with that one metal mag, but you know, I, like I said, I'll contact PSA and try to get another one. Now PSA did send this rifle out to the channel at my request. And if you guys are interested in this rifle or any of the other Sabre lineups, you can head over to my campsite page and check out those links. A lot of those links are affiliate links, so it takes you guys right to the best deals at no extra cost to you, but does help out the channel. So I greatly appreciate it if you started your purchase by clicking those links. 
The accuracy of this rifle was also pretty darn good. I did shoot it for groups, but not extensively, but I did want to put it on paper for this first shots and overview video. So I was getting about 1.25 inches to one and a half inches at a hundred yards with various ammo. Now I didn't put any, like I would, I would say premium match ammo through it. Some hunting rounds grouped at about 1.5 inches, ball ammo grouped at about 1.5 inches, and then I had some reloaded or remanufactured um, precision ammo that I put through it that I got 1.25 inch groups at 100 yards, utilizing the bipod and no real sandbags or rest, so it's plenty accurate down at the range for a functional AR-10. In summary, it's reliable. It's accurate. It looks cool. It's bringing the quad rail back, and I love the fit and finish. I mean, this thing is just an absolutely awesome rifle that I've fallen in love with it, and I'm going to be taking it down to the range a ton. It's just a blast to shoot, and I'm really glad I got one out to the channel. Subscribe to the channel to catch more videos and overviews about this particular rifle and others on the channel. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.